Welcome to Bound by Books. I'm Sherry Hayes, and today we are celebrating episode number 100 of the Woo-hoo. podcast. Woo-hoo. It is hard to believe that that has, um, it has been that many episodes. <laughs> I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm thinking back to that first podcast, and it, it's just hard to believe there's been a hundred of them re- that we've recorded. But um, because in honor of the 100th episode, we decided that we were going to have all four of our hosts together on the podcast to just kind of talk about what we've accomplished and how we have, how the podcast has evolved over the last 100 episodes. So I am joined today by Tina Moss, hey. Daniel Bannister, and Miriam Maria. Hey guys. Hey. Hello everyone. Good. Now for I just I do want to point out for the for those of us who might be watching us on YouTube, they might be going, a <laughs> hundred episodes. What are you talking about? This is only like episode like 88 or something. We started on audio only platforms first yes. and then we merged onto YouTube. So if you're watching us on YouTube, it's almost a hundred there, but it really is a hundred if you are listening from the beginning. Yeah, you were here when we did that very first episode, the whole you Welcome left. to Bound by <laughs> Books uh, podcast episode. It is number 100. So, yeah, yeah but, 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 that's all, folks. <laughs> oh, and we're done. See, <laughs> yeah, I mean, it, it, it's just it's interesting because when we started the podcast, um, we were kind of just getting our toes wet. I remember we were trying when we were we we're trying to figure out like what kind of episodes we were going to do and what, you know, what direction that we wanted to go in. Mm -hmm. I think Um, you were the one who proposed the idea in the first place of a podcast. And I think the collective rest of us were like, Oh, (laughs) it hadn't really dawned (laughs) on us, but that's something that we could pull off. And so, you know, you mentioned it and we're like, well, yeah, I mean, oh, I, well, I, well, I have well, been well, listening well, to some too. podcasts, some to some writerly podcasts, and I was like, you know what, we can do we can that. Do I yeah, mean, we're... we we talk, you know, we were already meeting once a week, and we were talking about really everything under the sun. We were talking about writing and marketing and um, just our daily struggles and successes as writers and I was like you know what we can we can do a podcast we can you know we have things that we can share that we've learned and we've all been in this business for over a decade yeah so, we've been around the block yeah I mean none of us were new to this. hey speak for yourself no. <laughs> I am around the block and around the block and around the block around again. the block just a few times yeah. <laughs> We've been around there. So, yeah, I mean, I thought, man, we, you know, we, you know, we have over 40 years of experience between the four of us. So why not share that information, especially for authors who are just getting started? I mean, there's a lot of, you know, pitfalls along the way that some of them, some of them we have fell into. Um yeah, so I think we struggled at the beginning of our, of our mm-hmm. sort of podcast, trying to decide who this podcast was for was Mm -hmm. this podcast going to be for readers was this going to be for authors um from sort of like a financial standpoint it would probably would have like made like financial sense to sort of aim this at readers as they're the ones Mm -hmm. that sort of might buy the books that we're writing but from sort of a a practical standpoint we we felt we had more to say to authors and it was and I think we all sort of felt like this was a way to sort of give back and lift up to, to other authors who who might be starting this journey. Just as we all learned from other authors who came up before us, we thought that this was just a better fit for what we had to share, that this would be a much better platform. So I think our beginning episodes, we were a little... We didn't know which we went back and we were forth. going. Yeah, we yeah, were we feeling it back out. and forth. And then yeah. I think we sort of settled on, you know what? We really, we sort of want to help authors. Yeah, and it made sense for us too about. because we were yeah. we were meeting weekly and going over you know marketing related stuff, but certainly we talked about industry stuff and a little craft as well in there. So just for like 
our purposes of what we were already meeting about, it made sense to like, okay, you know what, let's put this on a platform that we can then share with others. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Speaking of, exactly. of that, um, for those who maybe who haven't been watching us from the beginning um shame i know right i know how how dare you should you? but you can go back and rewatch yes uh, uh fill in maybe somebody want me wants to volunteer this how we sort of got together in the first place because none <laughs> of us knew each other prior to our villain sort of weekly meeting thing it's our villain origin is a very important <laughs> yeah. tool for us as authors so maybe this would be a, an interesting way to i will volunteer i'll take go okay. for it <laughs> we took a marketing <laughs> class together and we realized that um we were kind of the blind leading the blind so we needed to get together and each one of us had a strength that we brought to the group and um it just blossomed from there you know, it blossomed into a professional relationship and then from a professional relationship into a, you know, uh, a, a friendship. And whether it was for forced proximity <laughs> <laughs> so to name the trope or not, um, it ended up becoming a, a, a true friendship because each one of us, we are some of us are polar opposites. And but then we realize that there are things in our lives that do overlap that make us genuinely like each other yeah the the marketing class was essentially it was teaching us information in a very vague way and all of us were really wanting practical application as to what we okay you're giving us information but what are we supposed to do with that and we unfortunately we found that the class was not providing that so we Got we together to do on it our own. <laughs> yeah, and we started like dissecting and talking about these marketing principles that we were learning. We're like, okay, what do we? What can we do with this? Or how can do we, make we them do it? Is this, this apply? Right. You know, how do we? How can doing? we make them actionable? Right. right. How right. Can we, we, make them to, you know, we found yeah. that in the group, some people knew how to do certain things or understood a certain concept and somebody else understood a certain concept or tried certain things. So it was a way to sort of share collective knowledge with each other. Um, and we, you know, we created a little Google Drive and we started put pooling our resources together, which I highly mm -hmm. recommend um, to the beginning authors. If you can find other authors who are sort of at or near your you know career standpoint if you can get a group of people together a small group that you know meets a couple of times a month or whatever and you can share your resources is highly invaluable and you can start yourself a podcast we can talk <laughs> about you know hey. how how one might go about doing that and i think we Perhaps. you know we had a certain advantage in the sense that we could test a lot of things because because i do own a small press we're always testing uh every marketing and advertising strategy under the sun so we had this advantage where we could do things in a relatively scalable way where because we're, we're none of us are, again are beginners in this industry so things that work for beginners aren't going to work for you know people who are further down the line and more experienced so once we were able to kind of figure out okay this is what we're learning this is the items that are actionable we could then put it into like a test run and see does this really work or is this really working for a pretty wide variety of books and that was another added benefit and then again really wanting to be able to to share that kind of information i don't personally believe in gatekeeping and i don't think any of us do no. um, information that works and and strategies that works because at the end of the day um none of us see our fellow authors as competition we are all colleagues yep absolutely. there's plenty of readers to go around yep absolutely gotta absolutely. share the love got to share yeah, the love I, because our industry yeah. is very, very cold, mm -hmm. like film, like TV, like music, the publishing industry, is, whether it's indie, hybrid or trad, it's a cold industry and it's very, very competitive. So and gatekeeping is the perfect word to it really is. And, you know, there I and me personally over the, the decade that I have been writing have run across people who will hold on to their knowledge to the point of being white knuckled. And, yep. uh, you know, and they don't share it because they're, they're terrified that if they give up even one kernel, that they're, that they're going to lose 
you know, ratings or they're going to lose market share or, or, or uh, their sales are going to flatline or what have you. And that turns out not to be the, the case because I don't know if you guys have, have uh, come across it, but readers appreciate when, other, when they find out that authors that they like have been kind to other authors and recommend and so forth. And it just makes that one reader who was yours now buy from both of you. They could, you know, and they become like super readers at that point in time, you know, super fans, because they know that not only do they love your writing, but you're a good person too. Right. Yeah. Genre, genre readers and romance, especially, but not just romance. I mean, even sci-fi readers and historical readers, just genre fiction readers in general, they tend to be pretty voracious. Yeah. Yeah. They they read and read and read and read and read. And it's not like they just pick one or two authors that they read. They tend to read a large variety and, and they're always looking for new authors to read that they're, you know, new authors to them, at least um, to read. So, yeah, creating I think I mean, I I was just listening to another podcast the other day and this person actually said that. There was a well, actually, no, it was your podcast, it was the one that came out Monday. That's what I'm thinking of. <laughs> and see, oh. I'm like, okay, I was listening because I listened to a couple of other podcasts, but it was actually where your guest, Marianne, on your on the last podcast said, Evelyn, that Letterman. she actually stopped. <laughs> yeah, Evelyn, Letterman. she actually said she stopped reading an author because they were because of how they acted at conferences to, to mm. readers. Wow. Not to yeah. other authors, but to right. readers. Wow. Yeah. But but it's yeah. the same basic principle. It's like you are, when you're on, you need to be on. Mm-hmm. Right. And if you're out in public, whether you like it or not, especially if you are at a reader event or on social media or whatever, you are on. First impressions <laughs> last. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Yeah. And, yeah. And I, you know, I should probably preface if you haven't haven't watched the the podcast with my guest, Evelyn. Um, it was yesterday that it posted, but it's still up there. She was a reader who would go to reader conventions for she started going in, I think she said 2007 or 2009. I can't remember. But um, she didn't become a, an indie author um, until probably 2014 or so Mm. and you know so it was a good good chunk of years that she was attending as a reader Mm -hmm. and looking for new voices and so forth and she is Mm -hmm. she's not the 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 unicorn you know what i mean she's not the the you know she's not an anomaly most a lot of readers that do that they they go and they look for new voices so if you're going to be rude you know be rude at your own risk yeah you know and in the age of social media you cannot hide that stuff like readers share lists of authors behaving badly they will do yeah yeah cloud videos they they have no problem you know putting a name all over the place of things they don't like about a particular author so yeah it's it's not necessarily like a warning it's just kind of more of a hey Remember that you are a public figure. When you're an author, you are a public figure. It doesn't matter if you have one person reading you or one million people reading you. That's still one Mm -hmm. person has an opinion. You you are your brand, right? Yes. So you you gotta you gotta stand behind the things that you say and the actions that you do. And you know, for better Mm -hmm. or worse, that's you know that's fame, baby. (laughs) Yeah, and we've talked about it before, like kind of in our in our branding uh podcasts and just just in our authors behaving badly podcasts as well yeah. about things that you may want to do or not to do it's not to say that you shouldn't be a whole and complete person because look we all right. have our bad days and sometimes we misstep it's just you have to take ownership of those things yes if, if you put out something that you are suddenly like oh my god i can't believe i said that or i can't believe i did that apologize oh, An apology yeah. goes a a big, big way in, in readership. And if it's a genuine apology and heartfelt mm-hmm. and all that, right. you know, and yeah. not just for, for press or whatever, yeah. right. um, but, you, you're allowed to be a person though. Just be careful. Right. Be but I do think that goes back to while we're kind of talking about, you know, that, you know, that social media and, and all of that, um, it goes back to the fact that I think some people will post things and then, they think about it after they post it. And I think that just 
this just speaks to the fact that, again, you are a public figure. Mm -hmm. So you really do need to hit that pause button if you are if you're if it even, you know, dawns on you that you may be saying something that is controversial. You need to stop and pause and say, "Okay, am I willing to actually stick to this i mean is this really the position that i'm taking and there are things that all of us will take those positions on and that's fine it doesn't Mm -hmm. matter if you're a newbie author or you're a veteran author we all have them we're human we all have positions that we will just we'll stand our ground and it's our line in the sand we've talked about that before the hill you're gonna die on right Mm -hmm. the hill you're gonna die on, and that's fine but you need to be aware of that and and you need to have a complete understanding of what you're doing and why you're doing it and then go forward from there. But you need to kind of post with your eyes wide open. You, you're you're right. not just some random person on the Internet anymore who has, you know, nobody's going to pay attention to what they post. Mm-hmm. You are a public figure. And yep. so, you know, what you post. And you may just- you may have that that sense that. But I'm a nobody. Nobody's paying attention. You know, nobody follows me. You could be a nobody today, but tomorrow your book could blow (laughs) up. And then suddenly, you know, you've got this backlog of stuff that people are going to go and see through. You you never know when that moment might hit or whatever. You got to you got to the Internet is forever. Right. All right. And our audience, I believe, is mostly, um, you know, an older demographic. But if we do have any younger listeners, this is very important. If you are under the age of 18 or if, you know, you're a teenager into your early 20s, like sometimes we say things when we are younger that we no longer would say when we are older. So I would also caution, you know, any younger listeners out there who, who want to become an author, be mindful what you put on the Internet. As Marianne said, the Internet is forever. Just because right. Snapchat like disappears doesn't stuff mean it you does. You posted a year ago your statuses that you thought mm-hmm. were so epic and brilliant, and you'd be like, "Oh my god, I'm an idiot." Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I again quoting another podcast, and this was actually a different podcast, but <laughs> they uh, they they made a comment. They were they were talking about whether or not you should publish the first book you ever wrote, mm. and they. Um, they made it they made a comment about how they would publish it in ebook but not in print um because then eventually what? if you, you wanted to take it down you could just take it down and it would oh, it would no. disappear oh, no. and i about had a heart attack oh I was no like, that's such no! bad advice <laughs> it lives on people's devices <laughs> Forever. Yeah. And if somebody yeah. adds it to Goodreads, it might as well be carved in stone that doesn't yeah. disintegrate because it's there forever. You right. know what? The, for the younger people watching, you guys have a saying, it's FAPO, you know, F around <laughs> and find out. Well, that's basically in a nutshell what we're Okay, that's a new saying. that's a new acronym to me, Marianne. I have never Apple. heard that before. Yeah. I mean, I know I'm it's, not. It's basically to the thing, bl- but Leap around and find out, you know, <laughs> it, it, it kind of is one of my favorite sayings. I'm sure. Yep. Yep. Uh, me too. Without oh, the bleep. You can, you, can okay. see, you can tell how, uh, how trendy I am. I have never heard of that before. It's a great one. Okay. Switching oh. gears a little bit though. I did want to ask you all. So in all of the podcasts that we've done, do you have kind of like either a favorite podcast or a favorite moment or just some information maybe that we gave out that you think is like the, you know, the golden truth kind of thing that you want to share. I really liked our podcast. I think it was you and I, Tina, that we did on uh, morally gray characters. That was fun. That that was a fun one, you know, because, you know, I think just because we both really like morally gray characters. Yes, you do. Anytime we get connected to Marvel. Yeah, I was going to say, anytime we get to talk Marvel movies or use um, examples from, you know, media and uh, movies and television, it's it's always a good time with you, Daniel. I was going to say, probably one of my, uh, the funnest episode, one of the funnest episodes that we did was me and Danielle when we were uh, talking about writing sex scenes. Oh. <laughs> That was fun when we were going through and, you know, reading some of our stuff and talking about like situational, you know, things and how to approach that and all the 
you know, the details of choreography. Mm, that's right. <laughs> Sex scene. So that was fun. Spicy. What about you, Marion? I think it's the the stuff that Tina and I did on branding and world building. Oh, it's probably my too. favorite. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That was I, my favorite. I could talk that stuff it's, it's, forever. Yep. And the branding stuff is to be continued. Yeah. So because you're, you're in the be, middle of it now. I, yeah, I think, yeah. it, you know, at some point in my, you know, 10,000 jobs uh, life, maybe maybe down the road, I would love to do like consult calls or courses on branding because I, I love talking about author branding. I think it's one of my favorite things and how you can really like create an entire package for yourself, not just in your books, but in your entire brand. So, yeah, that's yeah. probably my well, favorite, too. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say one of the things that I would say from all of us coming together from the start, uh, really even before the pod, we started the podcast, but definitely it's evolved since we started uh, doing the podcast was how we've all pulled resources, our own individual resources together to help one another in various ways. Yeah. So, um, you know, obviously, you know, we've helped, we, we've helped Danielle to stay in her lane, uh, a little bit without Marianne, but with branding. Um, and, you know, we've all worked on blurbs and covers and, uh, you know, bouncing story ideas off of each other. Yes. Um, so it's really been great to have kind of that author. I mean, I know we always talk about the author community, but, having this small close knit group of authors that we really feel like we can pretty much discuss anything with mm -hmm. and get honest feedback. Because I think if you don't have a close knit, I mean, if you have another author and now granted there are exceptions to this because there's some authors that just their personality is they'll tell you what you want. They'll tell you what they think and they don't care, you know, if they're going to hurt your feelings. But having a close knit group that's just, you know, going to give you their honest opinion. They're not going to sugarcoat it. They're not going to sit there and just tell you something is the best thing they've ever read, uh, you know, ever in their life when it's not. Um, is is something I think all authors really need to find. Mm -hmm. yeah. Um, yeah, because it's really invaluable. Yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, last last meeting we had. I was talking about what I was going to come up and you know, writing and that I was doing more research on cozy mysteries and, and uh, realized that I was going to have to rewrite what I had written because the, everything that I had looked at was the had the dead body or the crime had happened usually within the first chapter and mine didn't happen until chapter four. And Danielle looks at me and she goes, you don't sound like you really want to write this anymore. <laughs> <laughs> so, and, it's, and, you know, and it's like, I, I've been thinking about that as I was doing, I've been doing my other things and you know what, maybe, yeah, maybe I don't want to write it right now. Any, you know, anymore, maybe it's time, not, not, not anymore, but at this right point now, in yeah. time. So, you know, it's a matter of trying to decide where I want to go from this, you know, right. because, you know, I have the a beauty of, of being an independent author, right? Is that we can sort yeah. of decide what projects we decide we want to work on. If something isn't filling us with joy and excitement to write, we don't have to write it. You know, yeah. unless we're at a contract or deadline, then that's a, a situ you know, different situation. But we can, you know, say, you know what? That's going on the back burner. I'm not feeling it right now. Let's but it's move nice on to something. But yeah. as, as Sherry was saying, it's nice to have people who know you well enough, both personally and professionally, to be able to, you know, the library is open. Let's read each other, you know, that type yeah. of a thing. And, you know, <laughs> and, you know, we can give each other a polite read, you know, yeah. where we're just like, well, maybe just think about this, you know, and then and we do we think about it. That kind of yeah. is reminding me, too, of what I was thinking about and like key advice that I would give to authors of pretty much any stage in their career is learning how to pivot and when to do that is really not just, you know, a business minded thing. It's also kind of an art form being able to look at the market and say, okay, well, this is what's trending right now. And this is what looks like it's trending, but also then looking at your own writing and your own kind of like 
inner world and feelings and thinking, okay, do I want to write this or do I want to go in a different direction? And I think that's really the difference between like authors that burn out after one book or three books or even five books and authors who have a long sustainable career, knowing when to make those pivot points is kind of key. And I don't think it's necessarily something that can just be um, taught, but I'd also don't think it's something that's naturally ingrained. It's kind of somewhere in the middle. Like you kind of have to have a feeling for it, but you can also learn by looking at the market. So it's inner and outer at the same time. Yeah. I, uh, I think with the four of us, and more so with other, you know, like what, not just the four of us, but most of the authors that I personally know, our genres are a passion. We love them. You know what I mean? We, we get into them. We think about the characters, think about the plot. We, you know, like it's something that, you know, springs naturally from us. And then I have a handful of authors I know who have, I can't even tell you how many pen names because they Mm -hmm. just write to whatever's trend and they just, it's their writing is just a business Mm -hmm. and I've never read them. So I don't know whether or not it's mechanical, but how do you have 25 pen names and, and, and just put out a book in each one of those things every four weeks, you know, you're putting out, you know, every four weeks is something without having a passion. You can't be that at least in my own personal mind, I I don't think you can be that sliced and diced and actually feel that kind of connection to the, to to the genre that you're writing. I think it's somewhere in the middle though, because I don't think it's necessarily just genre that I mean, it's also like what is happening in the market right now, right? Like what's not just like what genre is hot, but who is the audience for that? What's the most uh, popular sales right in like are we looking at ebooks or paperbacks audiobooks are on the rise as they say you know this whole situation with AI kind of knowing everything that's happening in that world and then adjusting where you need to in your own career so it's kind of yeah and I, and I get what you're saying too because you don't want it to be just mechanical obviously nobody wants no. a career that's just mechanics well maybe they do but that's a whole different topic we right. can do in a podcast <laughs> one day. um but then there's also passion involved but i think there has to be a balance because if you're if you're always writing to passion without the the business in mind then nobody would be listening to our podcast to be honest right because right. we talk so much about you wouldn't be making enough money to, to do the next book you know you, you, <laughs> right. you do have to have that some sort of business sense to you know make a profit so that you can put out the next one so right, right. tina speaking to what you were just talking about mm-hmm. what what resources for those listening who may not know would be able to to be able to look at that kind of res- that kind of uh, information that data where mm-hmm. would they be able to get it from well, How I would, would I would say so much of this is being um, tapped into the network itself, the network of authors. So like the, everything from your immediate network of authors, people that you know and things that are happening to like the most outer network, your professional organizations that you decide to join or not join for whatever reasons. Then there's, uh, you know, in the old days we had all the message boards. Now they've kind of swarmed onto Discord. There's... Uh, book talk and and bookstagram and things like that and then there's reports that you can actually buy like kalytics um from publishers rocket right that's for keyword search but kalytics will actually give you the most uh up-to-date genre information um from i think it's from kindlepreneur but i could be wrong yeah i i think you're right um and then i would say really like digging into people who would be considered experts in the field. Uh, If you join 20 books to 50 K, I always recommend that group because there are a lot of experts and you'll kind of, you'll kind of figure out who they are by reading the posts and, and learning and, and, um, you know, figuring, figuring that out that I won't say who, because then I'm going to be calling people out and I don't know if they're comfortable with that, but you'll, you'll get the gist of it when you start to, to read the posts and get to know who they are. Um, And then getting a lot of diverse information, like, For example, you know, you ask a a 12 year old boy what they're reading versus you ask a 75 year old woman what they're reading. You're going to get very different answers and the answers may surprise you. Um, So just trying to like really, I think, always having an ear to the ground, as they say, um, is the is the best way to do it. But you have to be plugged into the community. And it is that's that's the most important part is is listening and absorbing a lot of information yes. and then deciphering it. 
Yep. Yeah. And I, I will also put in there uh, to go with your fit, uh, 20 books to 50K group. If you are uh, a wide author, so you're not just publishing with Amazon, you're also publishing either through Drive to Digital or going direct through Barnes & Noble, Kobo, Apple, etc. Uh, wide for wide the win. For the win. Mm-hmm is definitely a group I would highly recommend that you yep. read. They have a load of resources yep. on there that you can, uh, they have a something called a, the tree of wisdom mm-hmm. that that they have basically have compiled. You, you'll spend, I mean, you could literally spend weeks going through to gather all this information. And then once you do, if you have questions, there are loads of authors in there Actually, there's a. I think there's over ten thousand authors in there now mm-hmm. that all publish wide, right? In some way, shape, or form, yeah. and so they have experience. So take advantage of it. Just like and these, these are Facebook groups. Just to be clear, yes. Um, author Facebook. support network is another one. Um, again, I would look at information from professional organizations: SFWA, RWA, that Science Fiction Writers of America, Romance Writers of America. Um, there's the Society of Children's Book Writers and Illustrators. There is also a bunch of indie uh, author um, professional organizations. Authors Guild is the most popular I can think of, but they yeah. put out reports as well. Um, I would also recommend IBPA. You can actually read their reports without being a member. That's the Independent Book Publishers Association. So you're you're technically a book publisher if you're an indie author, but you don't necessarily have to join that organization. You can just read their reports. Um, and again, it's about, you know, keeping up to date on the business as you would with with any business. Yeah, you really do have to treat it like a business. And that that's probably the biggest takeaway that I think that we have tried to um, instill in this podcast is treating your writing career like a business. Um, you are a business owner, um, whether you like it or not, because I know there are a lot of uh, writers who just they, all they want to do is write. And they don't want to have to worry about anything else. And unfortunately, that's just not the world we live in anymore. Even if you are traditionally published, um, I was uh, watching someone the other day on YouTube and they were talking about how traditionally published, uh, they got traditionally published. They they have a traditionally public, published con- publisher contract and they found out after the fact that with very with a few exceptions obviously the big big names the trad publishers will give you six weeks of marketing that's it mm. that's all you get that's after six weeks your marketing pretty much goes away unconscionable so, <laughs> when and, you think about the, um, the, the cut that they get you know yeah so they're gonna put if, if they're if they're going to put marketing dollars behind you it's going to be for six weeks and then after that it's gone they're moving on to the next book so you're gonna have to if you want your book to continue to pick up steam or continue to have a life you know the longevity that means you are going to have to pick up that marketing and that's traditionally published obviously if you're indie yeah i mean so (laughs) you pretty much can't avoid it i got Mm -hmm. it i I mean i've got to interject i mean it's it's kind of an unwritten thing now where just because you may get a a a three book contract with one of the big five that doesn't necessarily mean that they take care of everything from soup to nuts anymore those days are gone done dusted mm-hmm. bye bye gone the way of the well dodo. they're even looking at and what your social media platform is before yes, they're they want even to, looking to right. find you they want to know how are you going to be able to sell this book for mm-hmm. you, they want to almost know, establish right. they mm-hmm. almost want right. you established before they take you on yep and so, you know that's that's, That's kind of why I said it's it's unconscionable because they are the big five. They're, we're talking hundreds of millions of dollars in revenues that are being generated, you know, and I know that they have lots of salaries to pay and so forth. But, you know, it uh, it doesn't seem to be an even Stephen type of a thing. Yeah. You know. I'm gonna do this from the Go flip with side. Go with City though. Owl instead. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna do this from the flip side though. To be quite honest, as yeah. a, as a business owner, right? Because authors are always looking at our books as our books, right? They're they're their heart and soul. They're the thing that we bleed on the page for. A publisher is looking at it as a product. Your book is a product. And every week, even at City Owl, we have brand new books that come out. So it's 100% true that 
the longevity of a book is as long as the, the virtual shelf life or the physical shelf life. And the next book comes along and the next book comes along. And every single week, there's another book. There's another book. There's another book for a, for a big mm -hmm. five publisher. We're talking about every single day. There is another book. So even though there is marketing money put behind your books at our company, that doesn't mean that we can rely on that alone. Um, because the reality right. is you're going to make more from a series and more from a best-selling author, um, more from authors who put out more frequently, put books out more frequently. And those priorities essentially are important because they hold up the rest of the company. A book that's going to make, you know, hundreds of thousands of dollars is going to allow a company like mine to be able to take on a debut author who is maybe more of a niche genre or crosses genres or a book that doesn't quite fit the mold. Um, and it, and it, at the end of the day, publishing is a business and they're looking at, you know, sales and expenses, mm -hmm. profit margins. They are looking at numbers. They are not as passionate about the words. Now, that's not to say that the people who work there aren't because you'll never find people more passionate than editors and they will fight tooth and nail for these books. But there is a whole flip side of it, um, you know, mm -hmm. that we also have to consider in publishing. Well, and at the end of the day, if the if the publishers are not making money off of the books, then they are not in existence anymore. And so then there's no publisher to publish said books. So there has to be a balance, which is one of the reasons why indie publishing is so great. Because if you don't want to play the game, if you don't want to give somebody that much control and that much that somebody that much of your your profit uh, or potential profit for your book, there's always indie publishing. You do the work, you find the editor, you find the cover designer, you put the effort in and you put the investment in, and then you get to reap the rewards on the backside for whatever effort and work you put in. But it's a trade-off. You you know, you you either want to do it or you don't want to do it. And um, you just have to decide that for yourself because everybody's going to be different. Um, yeah. Like I said, I, there's a lot of writers that do not want to do the business, but unfortunately we don't live in the 1800s. <laughs> you can't just <laughs> write the book, send it to a publisher, get, get a publishing contract and they send you a check in the mail every, you know, every month or whatever. Um, you're going to have to do some legwork mm -hmm. before, uh, whether you like it or not. <laughs> before we so, before we run out of time at our podcast, yeah. I did want to leave a little opportunity for maybe uh, a listeners or viewers. What would you like us to be talking about in our next hundred episodes of Bound by Books? Is there a topic that you have been wishing that we would cover or want us to dive further into that you know really like that subject? Talk more about that. Let us know because we got a hundred more episodes. We got to fill up. So <laughs> give us your ideas. <laughs> yeah, we're always looking for ideas. I mean, there's four of us and we bounce ideas off of each other, but we are always open to uh, talking about, you know, what you guys, you know, what our listeners are interested in. Um, as I mentioned at the top of the podcast, you know, combined, we have over 40 years in this industry. Oh. Um, so <laughs> I know. <laughs> That sounds like a really lot. But, um, you know, we have a lot of experience and a lot of different experience in different areas. So mm -hmm. if there is a subject that you are curious about, um, or, you know, maybe you've encountered something and you're not quite sure about it, um, head over to our website. The link is in the description, both of the audio podcast and uh, on the YouTube channel. Um, and just let us know what what your question is, and who knows, you may see it on uh, become an episode on a future podcast. Yay. So happy well, one hundred! Yes, happy one hundred! And have cake. <laughs> <laughs> Who's making the cupcakes? Not me. <laughs> you whippersnappers right. have to do it. <laughs> this is I'm the oldest. Oh. Uh, all right. Well, I think that's a good place to wrap up. Um, I hope you guys have enjoyed listening to our 100th episode uh, podcast special. And I hope you will stick around and see what we have in store for the next 100. Until next time. Bye. bye. Wait, before you go, don't forget to like, comment and subscribe and check us out on our website, foundbybookspodcast.com.